Last Thursday was what all those intramural basketball ballers had been waiting for, the intramural finals held in the PMAC. Let's take a look at what went down. Game one of the evening, Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin Donuts excuse me, versus the Honeybees. He missed the goal, but luckily his teammate was there for the easy layup. Honeybees, she's going to take it in. Nice holding on to the ball, but no way he spikes it, having no mercy for the girls. Dunkin' Donuts at the other end of the court. Nice little hook in the lane. But this time, as the Honeybees will come back, he's going to take it in the lane himself and go over, not hitting rim or the backboard in case his teammate's there, and he's going to tip it in for the two points. Honeybees again at the other end of the court, finds his cutter in the lane for the easy layup. Keeping a close game here for the Honeybees and the Dunkin' Donuts, but Dunkin' Donuts come down for the easy, wide open three from the perimeter. This time he's going to hand it off to his teammate. He's going to take a three of his own, and that's why the Dunkin' Donuts would go on to beat the Honeybees 39-34. to This is actually their second intramural championship of the year. Our next game we have Los Pandieras taking on Kappa Sigma A. Point guard puts up the shot there, but Joachim Noah look alike. Easy two, easy two takes it in. Next play and one here for the for Los Pandieros. He would go on to make his free throws and complete the three point play. But Kappa Sigma not ready to give it up so easily. Kick it to the outside, easy two from the corner. They're going to keep it close. But Los Pandieros had some had some plans of their own here with the buzzer beater at the end of the first half. But Kappa Sigma A looking to make a push near the end of the second half. With that three, they would pull it within three to 37-34. But that brings on the clutch free throws for Los Pandieros. Clutch free throw one and clutch free throw two. That's what it's all about. That's how you win games. Los Pandieros champions here, they would go on to win by a final score of 43 to 39. After the game, Sports Showtime caught up with a player from the winning men's squad. Uh, it was ugly, but we, we were able to pull it through. I mean, we couldn't get no rebounds uh, in the first half. Even though we were winning, we were hitting everything. And we just came through in the second half, a lot of effort, knocked down free throws. That was the key to the game. Time to let our sponsors get a word in, but when we come back, we'll have the track results from the indoor championships. Plus the latest on both men's and women's tennis SEC action. Stay tuned. This is Sports Showtime on Tiger TV. LSU went on the road this past Friday the 13th to face Centenary. There would be no bad luck and misfortune, though, as the Lady Tigers won easily by a score of 196.650 to 192.400. ACK only competed on bars for the night, but she made it count as she posted an event-winning mark of 9.925 to capture her 109th career title, tying her for first and tied for first in LSU history with April Buckholder. The rest of the event belonged to Susan Jackson. The junior won both the vault and floor individual titles. LSU looks to carry this momentum into the SEC Championships this Saturday, March 21st, in Nashville, Tennessee. Going into the postseason, the Lady Tigers also boast some impressive ranks. As an overall team, LSU finds themselves ranked fourth in the land. Senior Ashley Claire Kearney is ranked third in the all-around, followed closely by Susan Jackson, ranked fifth. SEC play continued for the men's tennis team this weekend. On Friday, the Tigers took a close match against Vanderbilt 4-3. After sweeping doubles, the Tigers let Vanderbilt come back to take the lead with two early singles defeats. After back and forth play, a big win from senior Michael Venus finally tied up the score. But it was the clutch match of freshman Mark Botel that gave LSU the W. The Sunday lacked Saturday's happy ending, though, as the Tigers fell to Kentucky by a crushing 7-0 mark. The duo of Michael Venus and Neil Skupski were the only Tigers to record a win. LSU heads home to take on South Florida tomorrow in a 4 p.m. match at the Dub. The, the 13th-ranked Kentucky Wildcats strolled into, into town to take on the 20th-ranked Lady Tigers in an SEC duel. LSU quickly jumped out to a 3-0 overall advantage as the teams began the match in singles play. State and Spencer kicked things off with a 6-3, 6-2 win over Carolyn Lilly of Kentucky. 12th-ranked Megan Falcon faced no obstacle as she defeated 96th-ranked Megan Broderick in straight sets. LSU would go on to win by a final score of 4-3. The 17th-ranked Tiger duo of Megan Falcon and Michaela Hedberg also won their 11th straight doubles match to improve to 23-3 on the year. The Lady Tigers will prepare for a non-conference doubleheader Wednesday at Dub Robinson Stadium as LSU will play host to Oregon at noon, followed by Grambling State at 4 p.m. After the match, Sports Showtime caught up with head coach Tony Menace for his thoughts about the team. Uh, to be honest with you, I think through all the adversity and the different things we've gone through, we're actually doing pretty well. Uh, we've had some key injuries and some you know, things that have happened and I feel like right now things are kind of coming together. We're probably healthier than we've been all season and we're starting to really get focused and, and playing pretty good tennis. So 
I'm pretty happy with where we are. The NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships came to a close with 11 Tigers ending their season with All-America performances. The men took the fourth place spot overall while the women placed sixth. For the second straight season, Trendon Holiday took runner-up in the 60-meter dash. Walter Henning boosted the Tigers' points with his fourth place 35-pound weight throw, and Richard Simmons did the same in the 400-meter dash, each recording All-America honors as well. LSU won't have any time to rest, though, as the outdoor season fires up next se weekend with the Louisiana Classics in Lafayette. Time for another commercial break, but when we return, we'll have our own analysts in the studio to break down what's going on around LSU and more. And later, first look at the top 10 basketball plays of the year. This is Sports Show Time on Tiger TV. Welcome back into Sports Show Time. Many LSU students will be graduating this coming May and are going to have to look their best in a multitude of job interviews. It's no different for the senior members of the LSU's 2008 football team, and yesterday they were out there for NFL scouts to dissect. Tiger TV's Hunter Hall was at Pro Day and has his report on what Tigers made the best final impression. Monday morning, the LSU Tigers indoor practice facility played host to dozens of NFL scouts as former players got one last chance to show their skills to the pros. The former Tigers started the day off with measurements, vertical jump, and long jump, then cranked up the volume with bench press as they each tried to pump out as many repetitions as possible with 225 pounds on the ball. The NFL hopefuls then moved to the field where they participated in the 40-meter dash, the shuttle run, and the three-cone drill. The day was then completed with bag drills and interviews. Scouts were out in full force looking to see which former LSU star could be a potential star at the next level. Hey, stay home. Uh, a lot of my old teammates uh, that played in LSU, uh, a lot of those guys just told me stay home uh, with the process of training and, and football, watching film, just stay home. And, and that'll keep you above your, on top of your game throughout the whole process. Highlighting the day was defensive end Kirsten Pittman, who's 4'6'8 in the 40 meter dash, had scouts clapping their hands. However, the rest of the defensive line did not disappoint. Also impressing the scouts with an overall good workout was wide receiver Demetrius Bird, who's known for his speed but showed some skills with his vertical jump and his route running abilities. The future is promising for these young Tigers as they attempt to improve their stock for the draft in April, with the names like Tyson Jackson, Herman Johnson, and Demetrius Bird being household names in the NFL. Reporting for Tiger TV, I'm Hunter Hall.